Hi everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Nabs Effect Podcast. I'm your host, Naveen Ganglani. Crazy day, we're now recording. It's 12.10 Thursday morning. Uh, so the Wednesday, uh, a crazy UAP Wednesday has already taken place, but it is late. But Nico and I are still going to record to bring you our thoughts and analysis and our feelings, sentiments about what I felt was one of the craziest days of UAP coverage I've ever had since I started covering the UAP 10 years ago. Just wild, you know. Uh, <laughs> where do I even begin? Like the final four implications, the post-game codes, the fans going back and forth on social media, the drama behind the scenes, the UAP officiating, the commissioner's office having to come down with rulings. I mean, there's just so much to talk about. We're going to try to fit this all in in less than one hour. But yeah, just so excited to get into it with Nico. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know a few of you are very excited about this episode. You guys have messaged me about it. So let's get started. But before we do so, a quick word from one of our sponsors, Green Blooded. Attention all animal faithful. UAP Season 86 has arrived and it's time for the DLSU Green Archers to reclaim their spot at the pinnacle of UAP basketball. The battlefield is set and the roar of the crowd awaits. Are you ready to keep the animal spirit alive? There's no better way to show your unwavering support for the Green Archers than by sporting the finest Lasalle apparel and that's where Green Blooded comes in. They are your go-to destination for all things green and white, designed with passion and precision to help you stand out in the sea of fans. Ready to gear up for success? Simply visit Green Blooded online to explore their latest collection. Whether you're a student, an alum, or simply a devoted fan, they have something special for everyone. Get ready to cheer the Green Archers back to glory. Let your passion shine through your apparel and fuel the animal spirit with Green Blooded. Okay, we're back. And you know what? It's 12-11. I am powered up. It may or may not have something to do with the coffee that I drank before we started recording this. Oh, we're um, calling some... it coffee now. I'm kidding. Okay, you know what? That joke has merit, but (laughs) legit, I did have some coffee before this uh, with my late dinner. Wild, Nico. I mean, where do we even begin? Like, do we begin about, you know, you know, Tab Baldwin coming out guns a blazing after Ateneo defeats UE and just lace it out, um, his feelings and sentiments about the last few days, about how. Uh, there were certain comments about officiating. Do we begin with Coach Jackson Chago basically saying, why was my player suspended? Si and... Tamuna. Wait, ano ba nauna? Si ta- na- 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 yeah, na- nauna si Tab. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. So Sige. just just a quick recap. Ateneo beats UE. And then the second game, UP beats UST. Third game, LaSalle beats FEU. Fourth game, Adamson pulls off their most impressive win of the year at the perfect time for them by beating NU. Staying alive in the final four chase. So, I'm just going to read the full statement from Coach Tab Baldwin, okay? I'm just going to read the whole thing he said. Now, the comments he made, by the way, were unprompted. He was originally asked a question about Joseph Obasa and kind of went on a tangent to talk about, you know, certain comments that were made by... He didn't name Coach Nash Rosella, but it seemed like he was referring to Coach Nash's comments about officiating in Adamson's loss to Ateneo. Um, during the weekend on Sunday where Coach Nash criticized the officiating going as far as to say that the UAP might want Ateneo in the game. Of course, there's been so much that's gone on since then with Coach Nash not being suspended because he gave this apology that the UAP accepted and Coach Nash actually posted his full apology later on. Uh, and it was kind of like one of those sorry, not sorry apologies. But Coach Nash was not suspended anyway. But anyway... So Coach Tab shared his thoughts, and this is a long-ass quote, but I'm going to read it because I think it should be said word for word. So here's what Coach Tab said. I think there there was a lot of nonsense in the media and being spoken from other people in the UAAP coming into this game, and I think it certainly affected and distracted the referees. I really felt for the refs today. I think they were under an inordinate amount of pressure, and I think they did a really good job under that pressure. Nonetheless, that's not what we have referees in the game of basketball for, to put them under that kind of pressure that they were put under today. I know the UEAP doesn't need me to speak for it, but I'm going to, 
anyway, on behalf of the UAAP, I am embarrassed for some of the people in our family of this UAAP exerting the kind of pressure they did on the referees and on the commissioner's office. I think it's shameful. Yes, he said shameful. I think you all know exactly what I mean. Ooh, so what's he referring to? Well, you guys probably get the hint. I think we need to put it behind us and move forward as quickly as possible and get back to doing what's right for the game of basketball. Nico, it gets better. Okay, It gets wilder. It's my favorite. Ko. Go. When anybody, anybody does anything to the detriment of the sport, they are immediately my number one enemy. This game has given every single one of us in the sport way, way more than... We have given back to it. I think it is shameful when people bring the game into disrepute. Boom, baby. And listen, this was the quote. The, this press conference took place after the first game of the day, okay? Sakto, I, I reached Moa Arena today as the Ateneo UE game was ending. Dumerecho ka press con, di ba? Dumerecho ka press conference. <laughs> Ganda ng timing mo talaga. And Coach Tab Baldwin, bang, bang, just... Woo! Fire emoji, 100 emoji, whatever you want to say. When you're talking about like, whoa, this was one of the, them. And the energy in the press room as he was like saying, again, because he this wasn't a prompted question. This wasn't one of those situations. Hey, coach, how do you feel about you know, what's going on in the last few days? Sabi ko, may nagtanong ba niyan? Sabi mo, nope, hindi. Nope. <laughs> the question, the original question was something about Obasa, like, you know, being physical because yeah. you didn't have mom away. And then this is where it led to. And it was just one of those. Well, damn. Now, look, he did not name Coach Nash Rosella, literally. But I think we can kind of deduce, based on what he said, that this is somewhat directly related to Coach Nash's comments about officiating after the Adamson Ateneo game and the you know everything else that went on the, the next few days. Now you probably understand why Coach Tab isn't so happy. Of course, these are his players, right? And he wouldn't want the victory of his players to be kind of undermined because of an officiating issue. By the way, my personal take on it, I thought Adamson had a chance to win that game against Ateneo in the fourth quarter. They missed a bunch of shots. Ateneo won that game without cheating. Ateneo won that game fair and square. That's my opinion on it. Calling all Ateneo fans. UAAP Season 86 is upon us and the roar of the crowd is about to fill the air as the Blue Eagles gear up to defend their throne. Are you ready to be the sixth man and fuel their journey to victory to keep the crown in Loyola Heights? We know you bleed blue and now it's the time to show it with pride. Get Blue this year to help you do just that. The brand new collection of Ateneo gear is hotter than ever, and it's the perfect way to display your unwavering support for Team Ateneo. Let your wardrobe do the talking this UAAP season. Wear your pride, stand with the Blue Eagles, and be part of the winning tradition. Don't miss out on the excitement. Join the Ateneo community in cheering for victory. Get ready to soar with the Blue Eagles and get blue. But of course, Coach Nash, later on after the Adamson NU game, he basically says, look, Coach Tab and I are friends. We've been in TNT together. We've been in Gilas together. We've been in out-of-town trips together. We play, we've played golf with each other. And then Coach Nash said that, you know, it is the job of head coaches to stand up for their team, which is what he felt he was doing when he gave presented these comments about the officiating. And basically, Coach Nash played it coy. He played it chill. He didn't want to add gasoline to the fire. He's ba- he there's, basically, already, there's already gasoline. There's so much oil already. Oh, there's there so, was. Ano man, dadagdagan niya pa. <laughs> Binuhos na ng kerosene, solane. Na, na, nasusunog I mean, na yung UAP prior to that first game. Ang dami yung nangyayari behind the scenes. Anyway, and but you know what? Coach Nash is right too. That Coach Tab and Coach Nash have had a friendly relationship over the last few years. Kaya They've been in masakit. TNT Kaya together. Kaya mas masakit for Coach exactly. Tab. Exactly. That's why... Kasi I'm may sh- pinagsamahan. My pinag eh. And of course, like Coach Tab, which is like a, who's a father figure to his Ateneo boys, he's probably thinking, like I said, you know, why is our win being undermined? We want this fair and square. That's probably how they see it. And Coach Nash probably sees it as okay, I know for a fact that Coach Nash, after everything that they went through the season, losing Jerome with the injury, being in the final four chase, for him, this is one of those. 
I want my boys to be rewarded for all the effort they put in. So he's probably also thinking, okay, I'm here to stand up for my boys. So Coach Tab, he's probably thinking, I'm here to stand up for my boys. And because of those situations and where the these two coaches are, and it just so happens there are the two teams fighting for that last final four spot available, they end up in each other's you know line of sight. And that's when the coach post-game media sessions, that's when the warfare comes in. And <laughs> it was hey, wild. No, no, no. I'll was be wild, honest. Yeah. I want to hit you with this question. Would you choose to knock out Ateneo Adamson? Oh, hell yes! Ako rin, hell ako rin. yes! I mean, diba, gusto ko rin makita yun, just to add more drama. Yeah, I mean... Last year we had Adams and LaSalle in the knockout. Oh yeah, Adams and LaSalle. Four, yeah. Right? That was Adams, crazy. Pero Adams wala si KQ run time din, 'di ba? Wala KQ, wala Nelly. KQ, walang Mike. Full, KQ Mike wala pala. Yeah, KQ and Mike. And yeah. then one more guy was missing. I just can't remember who. But yeah, um Johnny. <laughs> Johnny. Sh- Johnny, of course. So, so, yeah. What a big three to not <laughs> how, have. How can I forget? What a night that was. That was yeah, another anyway. one of those. You know, Nico and I like I don't know when I'm going to call it a career, but when I call it a career, I'm definitely going to reflect on some of the more unforgettable days of coverage. That day was one of them. That, that was, that was one of day from last season because of everything that happened. And Wednesday, this season 86, you know, November 15, that's going to be one of them too. And my God, that was, that was wild. But that was, I mean, you understand both coaches' point perspective, right? Now, of course, there were some people right away who castigated coach... You know, Tab, for being like, just like two seasons ago, you were saying the referees need eye surgery and now you're coming to the defense of the referees because it's your team that's being accused. I mean, that's how some people are responding and perceiving. And of course, when social media uh, users get involved, then it becomes an all-out, like, you know how, you know, extravaganza, basically. That's when everything goes, you know, hits the fan. We, know how, we both know how it is. Oh yeah, we both know. <laughs> we both know how it is. <laughs> Kaya ba nagtatanong sa akin, hindi kagawa ka ba ng video doon sa Ateneo Adamson? No, nope. sabi ko, no, nope. I'm not gonna make a video. Not I did that once. That. Not I did that. that once. Nah, not anymore. See, to me, Nico, I- I'm not really taking a side on this matter because I see both coaches' perspective on it. Again, I want to clarify, I think that Ateneo won that game on Sunday fair and square Same. without cheating. Same. But Ateneo won that straight up. But I also know why Coach Nash... I mean, I understand why Coach Nash did what he did. Probably didn't use the right words right after the game on Sunday and it's an, to explain uh, his side. Very heightened emotions. He lost. Yeah, yeah. And then it's a very he, close yeah. game. You know how they say don't make decisions when you're really happy and when you're really angry? Because, you know, that's when it gets really tough. It applies uh, in relationships, my guy. You know. Exactly. <laughs> and... and, and and these things are a house of cards. One card falls down, the rest falls down, and you know yeah. it leads to consequences. So Coach Nash makes these comments. The UAP gets involved, basically asks him to. I mean, didn't ask him to apologize, but Coach Nash sends a letter. Coach Tab, the last few days, probably reading and hearing all about this. He gives these comments, and Coach Nash gives these comments. So it's just one of those situations that you know it grew into something, which is what it grew into. But neither side is wrong or right. You know, it's just what it is, right? Yeah, at the end of the day, they're just defending their guys. They're just, bah, it's like a father figure. Kakasabi mo lang. And I feel like uh, justified naman yung ginawa ng both coaches. Yeah, for sure. When it comes to cleaning a home or office, most people just know the basics. Mopping the floor, wiping off dust and dirt is pretty standard. While all that can make a place look clean, it doesn't mean it is clean. Making a place truly clean and virus-free requires a professional help. That's where The Cleaning Coach comes in. The Cleaning Coach provides outstanding general cleaning, commercial cleaning, post-construction cleanup, upholstery cleaning, floor, carpet cleaning, aircon cleaning, and disinfection at a very reasonable price. The Cleaning Coach and his team will do all the scrubbing, dusting, polishing, disinfecting, and sanitizing, so you won't have to. Making your place look clean that you can also smell and feel, you will experience the difference. Now that's stress-free cleaning to a better normal, done professionally by The Cleaning Coach. Contact The Cleaning Coach today to learn more. Now, Coach Nash and Coach Tab weren't the only coaches with something to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coach Jack Santiago <laughs> for you, you Red Warrior. So, first game pareho to, first Coach Tab comes in the media. Imagine mo, no? First game, pareho you, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. And by the way, ang sakit ng ulo ko this morning when I got to the arena at first. I I don't think I slept properly last night and I woke up and you've been massive sick headache, lately, right? Everybody's yeah. been sick. I'm still sick. It's one of those flus where it kind of goes away and comes back and leaves like, you know, weird. It just leaves after La- two yeah, weeks like Yeah, yeah. Labo anyways, my head was throbbing, but uminom na ako ng gamot, so it was you know, kind of getting better a little bit. And then all these things happen. Anyway, let's go to coach Jackson Chago Scott. So Coach Jackson Chago comes in. He's asked about the suspension of Precious Mama Wei, who, by the way, now no longer eligible to win the Rookie of the Year award because of his second and sportsman like foul and the LaSalle game, which led to a suspension. I know for a fact that in between Sunday's game of UE against LaSalle and their game against Ateneo, they asked for an appeal to have Precious and sportsman like foul um, looked at and maybe downgraded so he wouldn't be suspended. Because they felt it was a basketball play and he didn't really go with the intent to physically hurt someone, which I agree with. But of course, on the way to the arena also today, something interesting happens because the president, or well, let me get this right. E- exactly, yeah. Yeah, President Batad of UE resigned as UAP Season 86 Chairman of the Board. So I asked Coach Jack after the game, did the suspension of Momo Wei have something to do with it? Coach Jack said... I don't know. He was playing nah. coy. Yeah, of but course. The timing of it is just so odd, right? So Coach Jack, okay, let's read the quote. Huh? We all know naging problema natin, not only sa issue ni Coach Nash. By the way, Coach Jack and Coach Nash just so happened to play golf Tuesday at Intramuros. They ran into each other and they played golf. The two guys who are probably most annoyed at the officiating and decision-making of the league right now. And this is just so funny. I mean, you can't script a TV show better than this right now, okay? <laughs> anyway, the drama of the women. We, we, was, uh, then some girls like are, are also enjoying this UAP drama. Like yeah, everyone, sure. yeah. I mean, anyway, this so, is if you're gonna introduce like a girlfriend or a, a friend of a girl to UAP, this is the season to bring them over. <laughs> Yo, I got home tonight. I explained to my wife everything that went down today, and she also was like, "What the hell is happening?" Anyway, that's I think the reaction that many of us have. But it's also why we love the UAP. But to mm. some degree, we all know naging problema natin. This is what Coach Jack said. Not only the issue ni Coach Nash, but the issue kay Mom away. Now we got the suspension letter late afternoon yesterday. So Tuesday to less than 24 hours before UE's big game against Ateneo, right? They probably had an idea that Mom away would be suspended because of the unsportsmanlike foul, but they appealed it. And what Coach Jack was trying to say is they didn't know until less than 24 hours before the game. When our president learned about that, the request at Tasha this morning ng emergency meeting with the UAP board. We submitted video clips not only kay Mama Wei, but also ibang video clips ng other games na for us. Hindi naman ganon kabigat yung naging violation ni Mama Wei during the last game against Sasal. We showed him the video na may contact foul talaga, but to give him a mabigat na penalty na magkakos ng suspension, and not only that, unfair din sa bata kasi he's leading the Rookie of the Year race. Nakita naman natin sa video na he was reaching for the ball, it so happened, nangyayari talaga yun. May mga instances, and Nico, this is where it gets spicy, may mga instances naman with D.U.F., speaking yeah. of Malik D.U.F., na talagang naka-close fish siya with the NU game, pero hindi ganun kabigat naging penalty niya. In fact, kung tama yung memory ko, ang NU nag-request ng dapat mas mabigat na penalty. Nagkaroon... By the way, who played today? Padrones. Back oh yeah, today, yeah. Good. I mean, that's great. I, I, it's nice, nice to see, to see yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. Nagkaroon ata ng meeting this morning and kumbaga yung request ng president to deepen the penalty na pag-aralan natin muna na turn down. And then I heard nag-resign siya as president ng UAAP board. Something na ganun. When the players learned about this pre-game talk namin sa dugout, all of a sudden, nakita ko na lang yung players na they're putting the tape. Meaning the yeah, tape they about. wore for President Batad. And Remugat also had the tape for Momo Wei on his wrist. We support the decision of the school president and maybe I just want to take this opportunity to thank the school community for not giving up para sa mga bata. Talagang unfair doon sa mga bata. Alam namin yung hard work ng bata. But of course, at the end of the day, we still have a committee na magde-decide. Hopefully, this will be a learning experience for us. So, just to recap, the UE president asks for a meeting with the board to kind of review the penalty in Momo Wei. I'm guessing it does not go well. He steps down as chairman of the UAAP. We don't know if it's related, right? Him stepping down and him in the meeting Hindi taking place. Na. Actually, tayo, tayo wala tayong alam. Like, even though media tayo, wala tayong alam. Wala namang share sa atin mga yan eh. <laughs> But if we connect the dots, 
of or the tie we just try to oh. put two and two together. Are we sure this wasn't connected? This is my opinion, ah. My opinion. I so mean... it's connected. Mubarat ako. Mubarat din ako, especially for my player. I mean, what a f- funny coincidence, di ba? If the president requested for a meeting, the meeting did not go well for UE side, and then nag-resign. I quit. Fuck. <laughs> La- was, that, was that something he planned na? That he was gonna quit after the meeting that he requested for? I mean... But you know what? we can think about that. We can speculate. I do feel bad for Coach Jack and UE though. I do not think that the second unsportsmanlike foul was something that was worthy of an unsportsmanlike foul. In fact, magkaibigan pa nga si Momoe and KQ eh. Diba? KQ was yeah. the player. Diba? And they're friends. They, they even posted about it on social media after the game. He should have played, in my opinion, Momoe against Atene. I think that would have made the game way more interesting as well. Of course. Yeah. It could have been a, it could have been a, a different kind of not the result yeah. but more of situation. Diba? Yeah. And conspiracy theorists will say yeah, you know, the UAP wants Ateneo to get in there. I, I don't know how much merit that holds. That's, you know, hearsay. But I do think Momoe should have played. He did not deserve it. He just he does not deserve not be eligible for Rookie of the Year. Yun yung feel ko talaga na that, that they should revisit that rule. Ang sakit eh, di ba? Na, yeah. bakit mo, yeah, ano yun, like, why are you gonna get that, I take that away from the kid. They should really revisit that exactly. rule na just because na, ano? Let's be real, the UAP referees aren't great. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but they're okay at best. They missed such a crucial call and that NU Adamson gave would, also later on. Would you on. say they're worse this year than last year? I don't remember having this kind of conversation. They, have, they are not good every year. So but, lang, ha? I mean, let's keep it real. They're not good every year. You know, I was talking to... But would you say this is worse? 86 is worse. No, because it's as bad as it's been the last so year. So they're consistently bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure people have noticed that every year there's such a level of complaining about the refs. <laughs> to some degree, I think the outcry, I mean, the outbursts and the have been louder this year because there have just been more incidents. Um, but they're just not that good every year, and not just Sadly. the UAP refs, Philippine refs in general just haven't been good over the years. You know, you, I was, now, I was, the good Filipino refs are in FIBA. You mga kinuwa for yes, Nandun yes. mga good ones. But you, <laughs> lo, the ones covering our local leagues, <sighs> not really. Sadly, they, unfortunately. They, I mean, they're okay at best. I was talking to a parent of a player recently from the States and he was so surprised by how bad our referees are here, how inconsistent they are, how they miss so many calls. And now, they... magkasama tayo sa FIBA. You've seen the games. You've the seen how ref... quality of refs Iba. of FIBA. It's... Iba. When you have... When you cover FIBA and you watch the games every day and you Apple notice how the just... refs like can manage it and make their decisions, it's... Iba. We're nowhere close to that. At yung so... communication level nila when they explain to the coaches, iba yung parang nakiklear sa coaches. Ah, yeah. okay. Per, I mean, walang personalan, ha? I mean, it's just... Like, people, we're just, we're just people what, can tell us if they, don't, if they think we're not good at our jobs. It's okay. It's constructive criticism. But also, the ref just... It's about time that we have a serious conversation about why the quality of officiating in the UAP is just at times inadequate at, for so many instances. And what can we do about it? Maybe we should start sending referees to train abroad FIBA style, maybe learn from NBA refs, learn the game better. And by the way, this isn't me like saying that yung refs natin bumabenta yan or oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that. It's, more it's, not just, that. it's basically just, just the game itself. Like the game itself, oh. the decision making, having control of the games, not having to, you know, like, I just don't know at this point, every year it feels the same and every year it just feels like we want Better officiating. I think must the highlight lah because we've been spoiled with like FIBA, which is like a month long. We saw FIBA, what good yeah. referee officiating is. Just lang you up right after. And, <laughs> and, and not just us, Nico. Not just us media people too. Even fans. Fans oh, have yeah, access sure. to the NBA. Fans have access to FIBA worldwide oh, basketball. And you can see that the level of officiating we are so far from mm-hmm. that, diba? Mm-hmm. Like today, that miss call on Jake Figueroa, he literally stepped out of bounds. Hindi pa ni-review yun? Hindi. Hindi. Siya... 
Hindi yun review. What's the point of having a review if you can't even review that? And I asked Coach Nash after the game, Coach, may, did the refs give a reason ba? Like, why they did even review it or change that call? And he was like, wala. I don't, he said, I really don't know at least four or five times. I really don't know. I really I really don't know. Comment. And, <laughs> yeah, and then basically he said, the ref said that parang it was an incorrect non-call and they couldn't go back to change it. Well, if that's the case, what's the point of having a review system? That occurred two minutes with? before. That's the, the, that occurred past the two minute mark, na, diba? Yeah. Diba dapat yeah. everything. I mean, what's the clarity of rules, ba? Like, this also goes to a larger scale problem. The UAP doesn't even have a website. They don't have a main oh, website issue, with like yeah. stats or a list of who was on sports. Diba? I had like to files. ask it from you, pa. Tas mga Google yeah. Drive, pi yung pirug share mo sa akin. Sabi ko, ito pa talaga yun. Yeah, like, so NBA, you can now access like post game reports or sobrang parang. If the NBA is the worldwide like standard of basketball leagues, right? And they're making this accessible post game reports, referee reports, you know, explaining when mistakes happen. Like, for example, when the UAP came out with the press release um, detailing the post game report of the officiating of the Ateneo Adamson game, uh, this was Tuesday night, that was something, uh, you know, relatively new. I can't remember the last time that happened. But see, this is the kind of information that should be accessible, right? Should be evident. And it just brings like a level of credibility and could like lessen the outbursts of people complaining why officiating. I, I mean, it's a, it's a local league issue now. It's a PBA. There's yeah. a website, but the stats are not working. Or it's like the stats from previous seasons. I know, Nico. I I really don't it, know to tell you, Nico. You I mean, sleep better. Eh, lahat ng local leagues wala. Yeah. wala. Like I, I don't want to turn this episode into like a you know us. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, something like a rant session. <laughs> yeah, but then at the same time, it's a conversation worth having. It. It's really a conversation worth having because every year it feels like this is an issue that comes up, comes up, comes up. And have you ever asked any official, uh, sir, bakit wala tayong stats na ready on the go? Have you ever asked? Uh, an, an official or a part well, of the well to be quite honest it's not like it's so easy to reach some of these exactly. officials Actually, sometimes right I mean, would, some... would you say it's costly to set that something like that up I want to like talk to somebody just to like you know like find their bakit mahirap ba again I'm asking as a really curious guy I'm not being sarcastic I'm really like is it really hard kasi if it's hard then magigets ko naman okay uh, where, budget where then, where's the link to all the UAP rules. Where is the link Wala. to know what refs <laughs> Wala, can review, Wala. what refs aren't allowed to review? Where is the openness? And I think that's why people are acting like this, right? Exactly. Kulang sa transparency. Ex- there you go. That's the word. Transparency. Right? Lang. I feel like if it's just there in the website, I think 90% of the noise would be like... It's, it's about time. 2023. Okay, now. Yeah. Anyway, we don't want to get banned. Ha. Isa pa yun, right? I mean, the, the, I mean, I'm not saying that, of course, people are being banned. That's not happening, the man. I mean, yeah, we're just, we're no one's just being banned. Yeah. It's, it's like a joke. But at the same time, too, like, people should be able to find the transparency that they want or they need. And not just with officiating, but with everything. You know? Everything, I mean, yeah, yeah. I hope we get to that point because... The UAP is such a special league. People love it. People are passionate about it. People it is the invested. league. It is the league. It, right? I mean, it yeah. is the league. Yeah. Like, up the level of transparency is all we're saying. And the level of officiating. Because whether or not you agree with Coach Nash Rosella's sentiments about the officiating, you have to agree with the fact that these boys, these players, these coaches, managers, members of teams work their asses off every single year, go to class, go to practice, sacrifice their social life, sacrifice their time. And how much would it suck that all that hard work can go down the drain because the referee made a bad call or missed a big call and they can't even go back and correct it? I mean, it doesn't make sense. I know when I look for stats, kay Ong Pong skill po punta. So mm. shout out to Sir... Sir Pong, the best. So Sir stats. Pong, Ong Pong ski, but... Come on, like, the ba? Like, sana si Sir Pong could find a way to, like, get his team together with the UAP. Eh. Guys, let's have this on a website instead of people going to my Twitter. 
Yeah, we need a website. Yeah, we need a website where stats are easily accessible. Where we know Actually, how many my website like before. Files. There used to be a website. Para, so, yeah. to continue. Remember when you the UAP? So it was UAP.tv. That that's the website. Yeah. Tapos in that website, you can find the stats, and then you can watch live the live stream there for free. But I think that was no ABS-CBN pa, so it's completely different. But yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, my website that day. No, this we're, we're, we need a UAP app where all sports are there, all results are there. I mean, well, I think that's Filipinas Live. That yun na yun. I think we just hindi, need like because the Filipinas Live is still the broadcast side of things. Ah, okay. We, can, okay. we need an app of the league itself. Exclusively UAP. Now, I feel yeah. like that's more impossible considering mak- makikipagbanggaan yan with the Philippines Live app. I, ako, I just really No, I want... meant like leave the broadcasting stuff to the ah, okay. Philippines Live. Yeah. Okay, that's what you meant. Yeah. And I okay. meant the UAP app should be more of just the results, Stats. history, year-by-year results. You know? Or report for the game. or Exactly. News, right? Exactly. Like archives and like data and like important information and by the way, that app would be very popular and very successful. For sure. Diba? Oh. Diba? I mean, mag- mag- maganda traffic nun for sure. <sighs> anyway. Okay. I know. So, Alam mo kung mayaman na ako. Baka nag-start na ako. Oh, ano bang kailangan? Ano bang kailangan para mag-start ang website? Ano bang yeah, kailangan, and, kailangan nyo? And I'm sure some people <laughs> listening to this would be like, ang yabang yung dalawa. Kayo kaya dalawang gumawa na lang. You know what? Well, First of all, screw you for thinking that we just want this for the betterment of yeah, well, a league they, that we both. If they want to consult yeah. us to help, why not? We'll help. Exactly. Diba? Yeah, we'll give her side of things. We'll oh, give we'll her give, we'll, a lot of time yeah. to help out. Exactly. Anyway, so final yeah, yeah. four picture. <clears throat> yeah. I really had a feeling Adamson was gonna win today's game. First you quarter. Did. I, you did. I, I, hit. I, I, I did. Got I did. I surprise. I remember, you know, a friend messaged me. Um Nung lamang yung Adams on halftime. Uh, and this is a friend of mine who um who sometimes puts bets on UAP games and all sports. And he's like, is this good value right now to take NU? Um, they're probably gonna come back and win this game. It's like, you know, I'm not sure. Because Adamson is playing for their season right now. Diba? And we've seen this Adamson team under Coach Nash the last few years that when their backs are against the wall. And it looks like they're about to be outed. They come from behind and they do something to, you know, stay alive. And they stayed alive. They beat NU. And they not only beat NU, they led NU from start to finish. Even when NU went on their runs in the second quarter and then in the third quarter and again in the fourth quarter, Adamson had an answer. And they did it by a team. They shared the ball. They melted the clock late. They hit free throws. They got the ball to Manzano. Ojarika paid what I thought was his best game of the season. The rebounding, the effort were awesome. He finally really stepped up for the Falcons today in a big way, even if it wasn't just scoring. So, final four picture. If Ateneo beats LaSalle on Saturday, then Ateneo is in. They're the number four seed. Yeah. The final four is set. Four teams are set. Ateneo is number four. If Ateneo loses on Saturday... Now, what does Adamson need to do? Adamson needs to beat UE on Sunday, the first game. A UE team, which has nothing to play for anymore except for pride. But in terms of bearing in the Final Four, UE is out. They're eliminated. They haven't made the Final Four since 2009. Um, they won't make it again this season. So, if Ateneo loses and Adamson wins on Sunday, we have a playoff for number four. Because both teams are going to be tied. And we are going to have an all-out battle and given the comments the of both coaches game. recently, given how close both games between both teams have been, given what I feel as animosity building up between both teams, it is going to be a crazy, crazy game. But first, like I said, Ateneo needs to lose to LaSalle and Adamson needs to beat E. Now, what if Ateneo beats LaSalle? Okay, so Adamson is immediately out. Ateneo is in. What does that do for LaSalle? That drops LaSalle to... 11, no, 10 and 4 to end the season, right? So then, all eyes would then be on the UP and U game the next day. Because right now, NU is 10 and 3. Same as LaSalle. They are both 10 and 3. UP is 11 and 2 at number 1. So if LaSalle loses on Saturday, they would fall to 10 and 4 to end the elimination round. Which then means that if UP beats NU on Sunday, then both LaSalle and NU would be 
10 and 4, which means they would be tied for number 2, which means there will be a playoff to determine who gets it twice a week for number 2, which means both teams will have a virtual oh, test. Oh, so, three. same record ang Lasal and NU, sabihin natin, second and third. So, yeah. hindi siya quotient. They will no. have to fight for the second spot. Yes, yes. So that's when the virtual best of three comes into picture because technically it becomes the first win, first team to win two games, right? Because you're playing for the playoff, that's one win. And then that means you only need to win one more game if you win the playoff. And if you lose the playoff, then you need to win the next two games. Right. So it becomes a best of three, essentially. Now, that's if LaSalle loses and NU loses. Okay, what happens if LaSalle loses to Ateneo? And also, NU beats UP. UP. So that means NU will finish 11-3, UP will finish 11-3, and LaSalle would finish 10-4. and four. So who would be number 1 and 2 between UP and NU in that situation if NU beats UP and LaSalle loses to Ateneo? Well, here's how that's going to be determined. The number 1 seed, a tie for number 1, is determined via quotient. If we remember... UP beat NU by 18 points Lucky. in their first round matchup, right? So, if NU beats UP and both teams are 11 and 3, who will be number 1? Well, it will be determined by how many points NU would beat UP on Sunday. If NU beats UP by more than 18 points, then NU will be number 1, UP will be number 2, with a twice to beat against LaSalle in this situation, assuming LaSalle loses to Ateneo. What happens if NU beats UP also by 18 points and they tie in quotient? I honestly do not know. I need to confirm that still, to be quite honest. Yo, parang parang sabi, uh, uh, NU has to win by like 39 because of that, your that's, quotient. Okay, now that's assuming there's a three-way tie. We'll get ah, to that in a little bit. Okay, <laughs> so this is still assuming it's a UP-NU tie. So again, if LaSalle loses to Ateneo and NU loses to UP, then UP uh, then NU LaSalle would have a virtual best of three in the 2-3 series. And UP with a twice to beat would take on Ateneo at number four. Now, if LaSalle loses to Ateneo, Las Ateneo becomes number four, LaSalle is 10 and four, but NU beats UP the man, then that means Ateneo is four, LaSalle is three, and then the quotient will determine who's one and two between UP and NU. Now, I'm guessing NU's not going to beat UP by more than 18 points. I mean, anything can happen, but I don't yeah. think that's going to happen. Um, so then in this situation, my guess would be UP would be number one, twice to beat against Ateneo number four. Then NU would be number two, twice to beat against LaSalle number three. Okay. What if LaSalle beats Ateneo? Okay. LaSalle is 11-3. Ateneo will face Adamson in a playoff, assuming Adamson... Beats UE. beats UE. So that's in a different bracket right now. And then what happens if UP beats NU? Okay, that means UP finishes the season 12-2. LaSalle, I mean, UP would be the number one seed at 12-2. LaSalle would be the number two seed at 11-3. and three. And NU would be the number three seed at 10-4. and four. Which means, walang virtual best of three yan, walang playoff. LaSalle would have a twice to beat advantage over NU. Again, that would happen if LaSalle beats Ateneo and UP beats NU. Okay? So, obviously, that's an ideal situation if you're LaSalle. Now, what happens if LaSalle beats Ateneo and then NU beats UP? Okay, shit. Three-way. That's where the three-way tie comes in. That is where the three-way tie comes in. And that's how do you determine the three-way tie for one, two, three? Like I said, number one is determined by quotient. Right now, between the three teams, LaSalle leads the quotient. They are plus 13. Plus 13. U UP is plus 12. NU, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're minus 25. But let me minus confirm. 25 sila. Yeah, my, let me confirm that real quick. Minus 25 sila. So, unless NU beats UP by, like you said, 39 points. 39. Or by a Para big, big blowout. Para which, mag equalize. Yeah, which given the stakes of the game, I don't think is going to happen. I mean, what? <laughs> anyway, so, huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> but then, I mean, if NU does win, and even if they win by like, what, 10, 11 points, would that still be a factor? UP would probably still get the quotient. But I mean, LaSalle would still get the quotient. 
Now, it's important we note this. If there's a three-way tie, and assuming what we're assuming, which is LaSalle is probably going to win the quotient because of superior quotient, again, again, a three-way tie can only happen if LaSalle beats Ateneo and NU beats UP. Yeah. LaSalle, in my opinion, would go to number one in this situation, face the winner of the Ateneo Adamson playoff with LaSalle having a twice to beat. And then NU and UP, again, in a three way tie, only the number one is determined by quotient. Two and three would still have a virtual best of three series. So, again, if LaSalle beats Ateneo and NU beats UP, most likely. LaSalle would be the number one with twice to beat against it, whoever wins that. Okay, and then you pin NU for two. Not only, yes, exactly. And NU UP would have a virtual best of three I'm fun. series. So, <sighs> out of nowhere, LaSalle finds itself number one <laughs> in a very advantageous position. Considering the fact they were 3-3 three and three after six games, they have not lost a game since then. They have been the hottest team in the UAA. <clears throat> and this is where it comes down to. When you are vying for a twice-to-meet advantage in the UAAP standings, what you want ultimately is to have your destiny in your hands, to control your own fate. Diba? LaSalle has put itself in this position. If they beat Ateneo, they will put themselves in such a good position for a twice-to-beat advantage. All they have to do, really, LaSalle, is beat Ateneo. Is beat Ateneo. Now, they are been really helped by the fact that NU lost to Adamson. Adamson did LaSalle a big favor. And now LaSalle will have to try and do the same, which is to beat Ateneo to help Adamson out. What a turn of events after LaSalle and Adamson faced in the playoff for, final, for number four last season, right? But... If LaSalle beats Ateneo and LaSalle, I know Coach Topek said after the game on Wednesday that they don't have revenge in their vocabulary, but I'm sure that oh, players in the team will, you know, they want to get that win, right? So if LaSalle beats Ateneo, there's a very good chance LaSalle is one way or another is going to end up with a twice to beat advantage, yeah. right? Because NU lost. So if LaSalle beats Ateneo, and UP beats NU, that means LaSalle automatically is number two. If LaSalle beats Ateneo, and NU beats UP, there's a very good chance LaSalle is number one. And they're going to have a twice to beat advantage. Wild. Just imagine how it all turned out, no? Gulo? Not magulo, but more of a gulo ng how things could turn out. I mean, the explanation was clear. I'm just saying anything can happen kind of gulo. I know. It's... It's nuts. Now, I don't think any team is in the position right now where they can choose which opponent they want to face. Because say if you're LaSalle, you have to beat Ateneo. You don't want to screw up. You have to beat Ateneo for a good chance at the twice to beat, right? Basically, and just win. Keep on winning. Exactly. And just then, win. Exactly. Exactly. And then whether LaSalle is 2 or 1 will be determined by UP or NU. And then who they face will be determined also in part by who wins the playoff if there is a playoff between Ateneo and Adamson. Now, the drama, Nico, the there's something I'm very curious about. <laughs> let's say that, you know, let's say hypothetically, LaSalle beats Ateneo. And by the way, I'm not They, they can. Out. They can. Yeah. I mean, I'm not counting out Ateneo. I think Ateneo... Yeah, I mean, will... of course, ako rin. Ateneo is entering that game knowing that if they win, they get into the final four. Exactly. So the motivation is going to be at an it's all equal. high. It's equal, it's equal, but just different circumstances. Both teams, yes. Both, one team is playing for their final four lives. One team is playing for the chance to put itself in a position to get to the finals in a good, you know, in a good spot. So both teams are going to be equally motivated. So that's going to be a, a war, a battle of epic proportion. But... Let's say LaSalle beats Ateneo. Now, Adamson has to beat UE. What are the chances UE might suddenly decide to give its less experienced player some extra playing time Gosh. in a non-bearing game? Listen, I'm, I'm not reporting this. I am not saying this is what's going to happen. Okay, I'm just speculating. 
Can you imagine the social media reaction? Oh, for sure. Um, My God. Sobrang um that's gonna that's gonna be a wildfire that's gonna be so many conspiracy theories will be like we alam na namin na you ikakampe sa Adam Zod. Diba ba? Yeah, ano? And then it just so and it just so happened the two head coaches were playing golf, diba? Hindi <laughs> ko alam yun eh. Ko alam na laman sa yun eh. How did you find that out? Like I didn't get to ask. Uh, you. Listen, you find uh, that out? listen to you, some of you idiots out there who's, who are thinking that I'm like insinuating stuff. I am not. Okay, I we're am just being fans. We're just being moment. fans right in now, speculating and laughing. Okay, and sorry, I should have said the word idiot, but please don't be an idiot and think that I'm speculating. <laughs> I am not. Okay, we are just. I'm weird. I mean, we're just like having fun in this podcast. Palaaway si na, but one a.m. <laughs> I think it's the energy in the air, man. It's the, the coffee. In the... <laughs> I don't know. I I've started like block, not blocking, but muting people on Twitter. You mga eggheads. Yeah, that's good for you. That's good. Na... Like a, it's good. It's yeah, good. it's it's get great. away. Get what away a Twitter. great mental decision that is. You know, <laughs> but look, I think it was also the energy in the air in the arena. Parang daming combative kanina, eh. so <laughs> daming daming nagagalit kanina. Look, yeah. I, I was there no at the UE. Grabe. Ang daming mga offhand comments from both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too toxic. Anyway. It's a bit so... negative na. Kaka white hair also gonna. <laughs> <laughs> so, question is, saan yung white hair mo nagpapag- Oh, never mind. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, anyway. There. <laughs> anyway. Pause, you, should put, pause, you should make this pause. a PG-13 pa. <laughs> uh, the nabs effect after dark. Um, <laughs> um Okay. I don't think it happens though. Like, ako, feel ko, let I me mean, put my speculation, I feel like they're still gonna go all out. Feel ko ah. But, <laughs> pero, sa, pero that happens ah. Yung sinasabi mo, na just because it's the last game, might as well, oh, sino hindi pa siya nakalaro? Pasok na. Diba? I mean, M- MJ Langit, you, oh, 30 minutes, MJ Langit. <laughs> Rico, remember a few years ago, Coach Franz Pumarin rested some of his main players in the Adamson game, right? And I don't know what was the consequence of that, but I know it led to like consequences for, I think it ended up like um screwing, if I'm not mistaken, LaSalle. Because uh, LaSalle needed to um another team to win against, uh, needed Adamson to win against a certain team. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check. No, no, I remember na my pinadol- Pinalaro ni Coach Franz yung mga less, uh, this was, lesser used. Yeah, this was 2018. Nakaupo si But they didn't know the implication nung time na yun. Kasi walang yeah. pa. Kasi Ateneo lang naman yung season ng orong time na yun. So this was when he rested mga Andy and Ahan Missy for a game. Nagsa-Starbucks yung dalawa habang the other guys were playing. I remember this. and then But anyway, back to the present. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so... I mean, it's wild. It's just so wild. And there are such big consequences for this weekend's games. Like, if you think about it, we're going to see LJ Gonzalez probably play for the last time. Oh, yeah. USD, right? I'm not sure, but I'm guessing Nick Manaitai will come back for USD next season. But of course, last time we'll get to see Nick Cabanier this season. And, you know, until... This is the last time we'll see this USD version until the next season of USD comes in the more competitive. They're going to be more competitive yeah. like, moving forward. And then, of course, you know, UE Adamson, well, that... Adamson has something to play for and UE let's see who they play <laughs> and then of course Ateneo Lasal. it's not in the fact that it's Ateneo Lasal alone is epic but then you add the final four implications it's gonna be crazy and of course UP and you will have massive final four implications as well if I ask you right now ideally what would you want to see how do you want to see things shake out what would be your ideal situation or what would be your Situation that seems most exciting as a fan, as, as a, a fan, fan, as a fan of the yeah. UAP or certain <laughs> school of the UAP, uh, no, no, uh, as, as a, a fan, fan of the UAP, yes, sir, as a fan of the league. Okay, uh, as a fan of the league, of course, so my drama, I want to see Ateneo and Adamson face again one Agreed. last time because Agreed. of the popcorn worthy moments. <laughs> I mean. I feel like this this timeline has already been messed up multiple branches of timeline already. Na low so, key. Eh. <laughs> na, lo, na low key na tayo. Might as well add more craziness to the timeline. Yes, so sir. I want so as a UAP fan, mindset ko, I want to see Atreo and Adamson face again. It's going to be a wild battle 
while that means if I want Ateneo and Adamson to face that uh, again it means Lasal beats Ateneo on Saturday so at Lasal that means I will have to choose who I want to be the first seed no so most likely ako prefer ko Lasal mag number one mm. as a UAP fan ha, UP mag number three tapos NU mag number two because I really want oh. to see drama so you want to see a tie between the three teams oh gusto ko mag gusto ko magka three way tie which means kasi that could happen with my scenario that could happen kasi na- mananalo lang sa di ba if yeah. Ateneo and Adamson face that means matat- natalo Ateneo on Saturday yeah 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 so the fact in... na or tos Adamson beats UE in your situation <clears throat> La Salle yeah, beats yeah. Ateneo exactly so then Ateneo NU beats UP and then um Adamson beats UE, which yeah. would set up an Ateneo exactly. UE final, uh, Ateneo Adamson playoff. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And then later that day, NU beats UP, exactly. which would make a three way tie, tie. Lasal UP MU. Okay. So by quotient, number LaSalle, one, LaSalle. number one, UP and NU would have a best of three for number two, three, Uh-oh. virtual best of three. And then the winner of Adamson Ateneo will have a twice to win disadvantage against number one Lasal. So oh. that's the situation you want to see play out. Oh, you you just want to play out. So what's going to happen? For the final four, ko, so Lasal Ateneo will be in the first round, Mm-mm. first round or the quarters. So twice to beat Lasal, while and use number two twice to beat against UP. So it's gonna be crazy because UP is the from being on top for ninety percent of the time, big lang third seed. Yeah, you just imagine yeah. like how crazy that is. Like for me, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying that I'm against UP. I'm just saying like as a UAAP fan, this is the mindset of UAP fan. I want craziness. I want drama. I want okay, okay, magulo. So I asked you, what do you want to happen? Now I'm gonna ask you, what so do you think? What do you think happens? Oh, what do I think happens? Oh, yes. Fuck. So yung kanina is the ano the Delulu in me as a UAP fan. Okay, I mean, no, no, no. I, I, the... I know you hate I know you hate like mga no, no, yung no, mga no, shortcut no. words. No, 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 no. Yung mga word na keme, <laughs> ayaw mo yun eh. Di ba? Yun yung sasabi ko yung mga words. Anyway. No, no, no. I mean, no. That's not delusional, Delulu. Delusional. Oh, di ba? Ayaw. <laughs> because um it could happen. It, it could happen. It could it's, happen, yeah. yeah. Stick, yeah. You, sh- you mentioned it a while ago. Yeah. We talked okay. about it. So now, what do you think happens? Like, what do I think take, happens? Take out the emotion, take out the fandom, and like pure reason and logic. What do you think happens? Fuck. You don't matter. Put me on the spot. Okay, I'll give mine, you give yours. Okay, go first. Okay. So I feel like Ateneo beats Lasal on Saturday. Mm-hmm. because But I feel like they're going to win by one or two. It's going to be that tight, which means Ateneo already makes it to the final four, regardless if Adamson wins or not, right? Against yes. me. Yes. Okay. So if Lasal loses against Ateneo, they drop to four losses. They would four, be 10 ba? and four. They would be 10 and four. And then, I feel like UP beats NU on Sunday. They which, could beat N. Which would make UP number one at 12 and two and put Lasal and NU in a tie. At 10 and 4. Okay. So, maglalaban na... So, yeah, tama. And NU Lasal face for the second seat. Yes. Yes. And then Now, that's Ateneo really hard. At, Ateneo is at the 4 na. Yeah. So, Ateneo UP na first round. Wild. I mean, it, it happened earlier. It happened sooner than later. But that's the scenario that we have right now. I mean, people want Ateneo and UP in the finals, but I'm sorry. It has to happen sooner. It has to happen again because of uh, Ateneo yeah. is a young team. Anyway, we, everybody then, knows that already. So, so this would remind me of the early 2000s when LaSalle and Ateneo faced in the finals in 01. LaSalle won. And then in 02, Ateneo won. Ateneo won. And then in 03, they faced in the final four. LaSalle won the first game. Ateneo the twice to beat. And then Ateneo won the second game. It would be similar to that. You know, yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's it's been a while since that. So since since I I remember those series. Anyway, where were we? So ano maglalaban for second series Lasal and you, de ba? Yes, yes, yes. 
Now, if Steve Nash is there, if this Ooh. is Steve Nash, so ito, I, if Steve Nash is not there and you drops to three, they lose to Lasal. If Steve Nash is their field co, they can beat Lasal. So and I they asked, get to two. I, I talked to <clears throat> Steve Nash for a bit earlier. Ano ba, ba, the ba? Game. three weeks na ba? I mean, I wouldn't say it's one hundred percent sure because parang two weeks ago pa lang yung operation, di ba? Like it's been like a little below three weeks. But I believe there he's gonna wear like a mouth guard um to keep it protected yung injury niya. And then my guess is he comes back to final four. My guess, ah, I mean, just so hindi siya abut sa ano? Hindi siya abut sa battle for second kung ganon. I, I mean, it's possible knowing him. Knowing how much of a warrior he is, and knowing what's at stake, because honestly, for for you, Ateneo, for Lasal, for UP, for NU, and Adamson to a uh, really Adamson, the final four starts this weekend for the teams. This is the pre-final four, final four, but the stakes are going to be final four like, and that's what makes this weekend so damn entertaining and so damn exciting. Now, what I think happens. I think Lasal beats Ateneo in a close game. I think UP beats NU. I think Ateneo Adamson have a playoff with Ateneo winning the playoff, and I think we get UP Ateneo Lasal NU in the final four. But honestly, my guess is as good as anyone because if there's one thing we know, it's that the unpredictability of this. Oh, I'm done now. Yours, the man. Hindi yeah, I, I, just, no, I just gave it. I just oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of spaced out. It's really crazy. I mean, I'm so, so much scenarios entering my head. <laughs> I know it's it's nuts, but it's gonna be so fun. It's gonna be so exciting. All right, pero wala mo na predictions yun lang. It's just the table set lang natin what the final yes. four could look like. No exactly. predictions yet, because if we say predictions, bahama ma bash <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so now before we end. And the podcast, let's go do another segment oh, yeah, of yeah, yeah. Life Corner. Maybe lighten up the mood a little bit. So, Nico, what do you have to share? Yeah. What's your latest? So, is it related to basketball, yung Life Corner? Ko. Uh, I just told Nav a while ago, then before we started this podcast, na I'm working right now with the NLEX Road Warriors in the PBA. Yes, sir. Uh, they're part of their social media team. Technically, ilan lang kami. We're just two in the social media team. But it's... Uh, you know, it's nice to see na the PBA is moving towards a you at least yung in a way parang new school kind of mindset na okay with social media get to know more the players get to see the behind the scenes because uh sa NBA uso na yan di ba yung mga behind the scenes like talking to the players blah blah blah, blah. so hopefully I I get to do that with the NLEX Road Warriors and uh, it's fun because I've never been invested in the PBA. But uh, when I got the call that if I want to be part of the social media team, I'm like, hell yeah, bro. Let's do it. Yes, sir. And, yes, uh, sir. Kanina, nakausap ko si Thomas Robinson. Si na- I'm like, what the heck, di ba? Parang bilis mag-change yeah. in a week na talking to the pro players, Kevin Alas, uh, Don Trolliano, and... Uh, Richie it, Rogers, the new guy. Richie Roger. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I'm some, I'm big lang invested in a PBA team. <laughs> yes sir look you at you that? man I'm happy yeah. for you I'm so happy thank for you, you thank you you, you deserve know, this you still deserve basketball this. yeah you know that's my life update it's still related to the basketball but it's uh, not say a new challenge but more of uh, in a way part of I can say I'm part of a PBA yeah. team right yeah. I'm part of the staff Exactly. Nakilala yeah. ko, pinakilala ko, pinakina you, you've Coach got... Eman Coach Frankie Lim like what the heck I'm there in the dugout with them I'm there in the room you got one strategies. foot in the door, bro. Yeah, you're in there. I mean, and it's the experience is gonna be so valuable, and you're gonna learn right? so much, and oh. you're gonna you're gonna kick ass. You're gonna do such a great job. Yeah, and seeing like your mga strategy nila be- before a game, I'm like, what the heck? I'm allowed to be inside the do- the room, the locker. So wag mo lang post sa Twitter yung mga. Strategy. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't have Twitter. I don't have Twitter. I I close my Twitter. Yeah, yeah, I but remember yeah, that. But yeah. You might yeah, need I... to bring it back soon for the final four. By the way, I want to, you know... Wish... TikTok na lang, guys. TikTok na lang. <laughs> I want to wish your wife, Mitch, the best. I think I hear her coughing right oh, now. Bro, Hope she's doing okay. okay. Wait, I'll close the door lang. Nag-uubo siya. <laughs> go I'll lang, go lang. lang. All right, back. All right. So, we've mentioned it in the podcast a few times that we have a group chat 
called TNE Content Network, right? So TNE Content Network is a group chat we have on Messenger. Um, it's basically the Navs Effect Network. It's where I it's a kind of exclusive group chat where I invite friends in the industry, my friends in real life, and other content creators to talk about sports daily, to share links to different contents people make, you know, an avenue for people to share their work and to express their opinions and to have interesting debates and lively conversations about sports that, you know, try to veer away from the toxic side of things. Try it. But <laughs> of course, like most group chats, you know, there are certain heated moments, especially when school allegiances in the UAAP come in, right? Now, we've had two characters that many UAAP fans will know. A diehard UP fan named Mitch, which if you've seen my social media, you've definitely seen her commenting. And you've definitely seen her earn the ire of Ateneo fans um, all season long. And, 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 another, and NU fans, yes. <laughs> um, almost all fan bases. That's, that's what Mitch does. Right? Mitch has also been on this podcast before. And our friend John Paul Manahan, JP. That's my guy who, right there. <laughs> who is as blue-blooded as it gets. Uh, but he's also part of UAP Media. He does great work. And he follows all sports. So neither Mitch nor JP will back down. My friends, believe me when I say Mitch versus JP in our group chat and social media is the real battle of Katipunan. <laughs> like, the UP side and the Ateneo side of things, this is the personification of that. And these two have been going at it for months, almost a year Since game now. one. Exactly. And, you know, as the role of the admin in the group chat and the mediator of sorts, I have had to come in so many times and basically tell these two adults, acting like kids sometimes, to cut it the hell off, right? To stop it, to chill out, and to bring the topics back to, like, good sports discussions. And of course, they say yes. And a few weeks later, a new topic comes up and they're back at it. You mean so... a few hours later, not a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> a few weeks. A few hours later. Shout out to our TNE fan, by the way. Our TNE content. That's we love such them. A we love them community. both equally. That's Every day, it's such an active chat and community. And Shout out to so Mon. Laughs. To Mon, our guy Mon. Stop irritating me, Mon. Please chill out at the hot takes. Um, but of course, shout out to everyone there. Um, it just makes the sports events daily, you know, so exciting. But anyway, so Tuesday night, my phone is blowing up. Messenger, okay? And usually when my phone is blowing up, that means in my um experience, some news has gone down or something is going down and, you know, it's time to work. So I'm having my Tuesday night bowling tournament and I'm there playing. We're trying to make the playoffs in my bowling tournament and my phone keeps blowing up, blowing up. And Mitch and JP for hours are just going at it with regards to this um officiating, you know, thing with Nash Rosella that went yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, that's after Ateneo Adamson game. Exactly. Yeah. But, but yun topic, yun topic exactly. And they're both making great points. To be fair to them, at first it usually starts about a debate on sports, which we, you know, encourage good debates and conversations about sports. But of course, these two eventually maybe cross the line a little bit every now and then. By the way, shout out to J- Mitch and JP. They're both great people and we like them. Um, and who they are on social media isn't indicative of who they are as people in real life. So we have a friend named Jorel who sobrang napikon at night na messaging group chat, gabi na, ito pa rin pinapag-away niyo. So Nico, you know what? When I got home, I said, you know what? I have like told these two to cut it off so many times and they're just doing the same thing. Let's try a different strategy. Asarin nga natin silang dalawa. That's, you know what? Maybe these two actually like each other. Diba? So... Tawa-tawa talaga ako. Sabi ko. <laughs> ako naman, I was, I was coming from a basketball game as well. So, nabibas ako. Wow. <laughs> Completely changed. So shout out to you know my sister Nicole, she's part of the community as well, to Jarrell, um, to Sands, to Mon, to even you, Nico, everyone who took part. And we all just decided we are gonna start shipping Mitch and JP together. We started telling people to come up with hashtags. We started like teasing them about ignoring each other at the UAAP games. It got so funny that we started posting memes and edited Photoshop pictures of the two of them. Yung group photo nga natin, <laughs> silang dalawa na eh. 
pinalit ko yung group photo. I made it the two of them like so close to each other in edited photo. And shout out to Enzo for even making like an edited video with hearts and like songs and like and it just changed the whole dynamic of the chat. They went from like going at each other to all of us laughing and having a good time. And for one night, we didn't talk about sports at all. We were just like acting like high school kids teasing two classmates. Alam mo mga asaran pag like when two people are just like annoying. And this is why so now I want UP and Ateneo to face the first round <laughs> so we can get that photo of uh of JP and Mitch. Kasi si Mitch kasi may sabi rin kwento na JP has passed me so many times <laughs> but, and he never said hi. Sabi ko, Apo, ta, panag, panag meet ang Atreo at UP, mm-hmm. pipilitin ko si JP, halika, sumama ka muna sa akin, picture ka muna dun. <laughs> I, I told both of them too, I wanted to see them at the games today so I could take picture a selfie with dalawa. both of them. Pero ang kulit nila, grabe. And you know what? I told both of them, whenever you two like go at each other from now on, I am just going to tease the both of you and change the vibe from Battle of Katipunan to Lovers of Katipunan. Imagine if they start dating as oh, unlikely my as that would God. Ako volunteer ako na gawin niyo na ako nino. Ako nang babae <laughs> na natanggago niyo para sa anak niyo. Ako na bahala. Bro, I told them name their first child Naveen. Naveen. That I w- I kid you not. I got home last night and for a good one and a half hour, all I did was just chat in our group chat and like laugh nonstop. And I feel like I wasn't the only one. I feel like everyone stopped. Where si Nicole then? I'm sure yeah. tonto was si Nicole sa nangyayari. <laughs> Dude, even like sila, some of the guys were messaging me like privately that they were having a heck of a time. Nicole ang benta. She even like posted a meme and was like. The meme said something like, I'm new to puberty. Is this sexual tension? Sexual <laughs> tension. <laughs> anyway, the point of the story is sometimes when two people are going at each other like crazy, the best solution is just to tease them. And it just changes the energy in the air. It's like, it's like Helga in Hey Arnold, diba? Sobrang niyang nagago, ginagago niya si Arnold, but in reality, she really likes Arnold. So, I feel like this is Ar- Arnold and Helga. Kind oh of. my God. Are right? we gonna change their nicknames to Arnold and Helga? Arnold and Helga. I, I, hope, they, I, I hope they get the reference. I, I hope they listen to this podcast. And, they, <laughs> and just so you both know, Mitch and JP, this is gonna be a common theme moving forward. So, Nico's right. Let's get a UP Ateneo series just to see yeah. how this... All for the sake of our star cross lovers. Hi! Yeah. Okay, I think that's a great way to end the podcast. Nico, again, congratulations on your new, on your new gig. Well Thanks, deserved. Thanks, bro. Thank you, thank you. I'm sure you. you're going to do awesome. And I cannot wait to see how this UAP Final Four situation plays yes, out. Yes, sir. Let's have this up. Let's have this episode up. Immediately, people need to know where we are, where we stand. <laughs> For sure, for sure. We'll catch you all at the games. Medyo, may kakot ba tayo dito? Wala, no? Ito na yun, eh. Tuloy-tuloy yan. Tuloy-tuloy Maybe a few parts. Bala na si Jason dyan. Ah, shit. Sige. Fuck. All right. See you around, Nix. All right. See you, bro. Thanks, Nav.